Washington Post congressional reporter Mike DeBonis is in Washington and joins us now. Uh, Mike, we heard just a few details, obviously, this afternoon. One of them we just heard from the president himself. This proposal to increase the defense spending up 10 percent to $54 billion, and the rest of the federal government and the other departments pay for it. What do you make of that so far? Uh, it's not terribly surprising, considering the things that uh, Donald Trump said on the campaign trail. He said he was going to beef up the defense spending. Uh, that's a, a view that many uh, Republicans in Congress have held for, for many years. Uh, the, the real uh, issue going forward is, is there going to be the, the requisite support in Congress uh, to carry out those plans? Uh, not every uh, uh, Republican in Congress uh, agrees with the, the need for increased defense spending, or if they do believe that there, there should be increased defense spending, they, they believe it needs to be offset in other departments. And that is what uh, Donald Trump is, seems to be proposing today, is, is offsetting that spending by cutting uh, programs uh, across other parts of the government. And uh, while, you know, generally speaking, the, the you know, uh, Republicans have called for cuts in domestic spending, a lot of those programs do have uh, backers of both parties. It can be very politically difficult uh, to, to, to move forward with that. And, and that's, I think, what we're going to see play out over the next, uh, uh, the coming weeks and months. We've even heard, I mean, there was pushback prior to being Secretary of Defense. General Mattis was the one who, who talked about funding the State Department and saying that if, if you don't fund the State Department fully, then ultimately he needs more ammuni ammunition and pointing out that you need to basically work on two fronts, not just with the military, but also with diplomacy. Do, so do we expect that to come into play later as this budget goes forward? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's there's a strong case that uh, that's been made over the years that a uh, uh, dollar spent uh, in the State Department is uh, you know equals uh, uh, many multiples of that in saved uh, spending on uh, conflicts uh, avoided. And uh, you know I, I think that that's a case that I think many in Congress of both parties uh, subscribe to. Um, and uh, I think it, that's going to be one of the toughest sells for, for President Trump uh, to, to say we're going to uh, beef up the military at the expense of the State Department, whose mission is to advance U.S. interests without using military force. Um, and, and I think that, that that's one thing certainly to keep an eye on. The potential Trump ties to Russia also remain in the headlines. President George W. Bush, the latest to support an investigation into those alleged contacts. Let's take a listen to what the former president had to say. First of all, I think I think we all need answers. Uh, whether or not the special prosecutor is the right way to go tonight, you're talking to the wrong guy. I have great faith in uh, Richard Burr, for example. He's the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Really good guy and an independent thinker. And, you know, if he were to recommend a special prosecutor, then I could, I'd be, uh, you know, I, 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 then I'd, it, it'd have a lot more credibility with me. But I'm really, you know, I've never been a lawyer. Uh, you know, I'm not sure the right avenue to take. I am sure, though, that that question needs to be answered. Now, former House Oversight Committee Chairman Daryl Issa, among some others on Capitol Hill, are calling for a special prosecutor. But we just heard a, a little over an hour ago the House Intelligence Chair deny that there was any evidence tying Trump to Russia and no special prosecutor was needed. How does the White House respond to these calls? Well, I mean, the, the White House has been, you know, steadfast in saying that uh, there is no outside uh, independent inv investigation needed. They've uh, basically uh, tolerated the uh, the fact that the intelligence committees in the Senate and the House are going are looking into this. Um, they're, they're certainly not in favor of uh, expanding it, uh, either by the appointing a special prosecutor or creating some sort of independent commission. Um, you know, the, the question is, 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 is you know, the, the public uh, willing to accept, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, congressional investigations and the investigation that the Justice Department and the FBI are undertaking as, as the final word on this? And, uh, you know, that's, you know, remains to, to be played out. Uh, I think that, you know, certainly having someone like Daryl Issa, who's, who's been a, a real uh, a Republican warrior, uh, over the past decade, uh, saying that there, there's a need for a special prosecutor, I think that that's pretty uh, that's a pretty powerful statement. Um, I think we'll see if 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 more more people in his position or in similarly situated start saying things like that. It, it could make it you know the pressure could build uh, for Attorney General Sessions to appoint a special prosecutor 
or for there to be a congressionally appointed independent panel, much like that we had with the 9-11 Commission? We have his uh, address, the president's address to the joint session of Congress coming up tomorrow night is job approval rating stands at just 44 percent, which is a record low for a newly inaugurated commander in chief. So what are you expecting to hear from the president? I think he's going to talk uh, about what he's done already, about why he why he's done what he's done and what he intends to do going forward. Uh, the, the big question on Capitol Hill is how specific is he going to get on the legislative matters that that he wants to get done, particularly health care, tax reform and uh, uh, infrastructure is also might be something he wants to talk about. But right now there's some serious internal debates going on in the Republican Party over health care and tax reform. And he needs to sort of play the referee and, and make some tough choices about which direction to go in. And uh, we don't know how, just how specific he's going to get uh, if he's not, if he doesn't move to help resolve some of these disputes uh, that could help, you know, th that could mean, you know, weeks more of, of internal wrangling um, and it, it could make it difficult to move forward with his legislative agenda. You talk about disputes within his own party. What about the Democrats? Where can the president possibly reach out across the aisle? You know, Democrats have said all along, if, if, the, if uh, the president wants to come to them with uh, uh, the sorts of things that they support, you know, infrastructure spending is a big is, is one thing that they routinely talk about. Uh, but but he's not put forth a, 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 a particularly detailed plan, uh, uh, rolled out any sort of uh, infrastructure agenda. And right now the the, the tenor is, is really quite poisonous between uh, uh, the, the Trump administration and Democrats, you know, just based on the, the, the Russia allegations, uh, based on what the, the approach he's taken on uh, his executive orders on the, the, uh, the travel ban, uh, his approach to health care, his approach to tax reform. Uh, there's, there, you know, the, 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 there's not a lot of uh, back and forth uh, give and take happening with, with Democrats right now. If you're a glass half full person, I guess you say there's only one way to go, and that would be up from where they are right now. <laughs> Mike DeBonis in Washington, thank you. Thank you.